Hey everybody, Dr. Boyce Clark with Lubricity Labs. I hope you guys are doing well. Happy Thursday and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk about quinoa. <laughs> Exciting stuff, right? Probably familiar with it, heard about it as a food, and probably had it. It's great. But what's the deal with quinoa in beauty, with skin and hair? Well, let's first talk about what quinoa is. It's got kind of a crazy uh, spelling, which is pronounced quinoa. It, uh, Archaeological data suggests that it was domesticated around 4,000 years ago in the Andes Mountains, so Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and uh, but we can trace it back to actually uh, evolving around 7,000 years ago, so it's quite an old grain. In fact, the Incas referred to it as the mother of all grains. Uh, we often hear it called a superfood. What does that mean? Uh, it's superfood because it is a complete protein. So what's a protein? Proteins are chains of amino acids. So I attempted to draw one here. Uh, if each one of these circles represents an amino acid, let's see, you've got lysine, tyrosine, um, tryptophan, cysteine, alanine. These are the building blocks of proteins, and a typical protein would be two or three hundred of these amino acids in a row. Um, each one of these amino acids have their own names, but uh, there are nine of them that we can't make in our own body. So if a food has all nine of them, it's called an essential or a complete protein because it contains all nine of the essential amino acids. Quinoa has a tremendous amount of protein in it. Uh, some studies comparing it to things like barley and wheat and other uh, grains show that it actually has the highest amount of protein. Uh, interestingly enough, it also contains flavonoids, which are antioxidants. Again, the highest concentration of antioxidants in any type of grain. That being said, uh, quinoa is not a grain. It's a seed. So uh, we call it a pseudo cereal because it's grown and then picked apart, the seeds are removed, and then we cook those seeds like a grain. So that's like something like rice. Uh, if you haven't had it, it's small, uh, smaller than rice. It comes in various colors, black to red, brown, and um, it has a popcorn-like roasted taste to it. It's great. So what's the, uh, the deal with it in beauty? So in beauty, we use it and this protein form but it's uh, referred to as a hydrolyzed protein. What does that mean? So we've got these long protein chains. They're not that helpful for us in skin or hair. They're great for our body because our body chops these down into usable pieces. So when we hydrolyze something, we take the pH to either very high or very low, and what happens is these chains get broken and the protein comes apart in pieces anywhere from five to 30 amino acids long. Those are kind of the important links for beauty, for skin and hair. Once these are, are, are chopped into the smaller pieces, we can add them to skin care and hair care products because they will bind to the protein that we naturally have and uh, reinforce it. So when you talk about your hair, human hair is 95% protein. Most of that is keratin protein. Damage from UV radiation, from heat, from chemical processing, from oxygen in the air, from pollutants in the hair, damages our proteins in our, in our hair. And it leaves them exposed. If you think about just kind of like, you know, ripping a piece of paper and it gives the jagged edge. Now that jagged edge has charges that are imbalanced. So what can happen is we're using products that have proteins in them, cut into these small groups, will then bind to these jagged edges cancel out the charge imbalance, and reinforce it. So we talked last week about fine hair and about the structure. So if this is a, a hair uh, strand sliced in half, we've got the outside of the cuticle, then the inside the cortex. Remember, that's the part that adds the strength to your hair. That's where the majority of the keratin is. And these are keratin fibers that are laminar. They're in parallel sheets, so they can flex and they add strength. This is also the part that is not very prominent in fine hair and also gets damaged. Uh, certainly the cuticle gets lifted, but also this is where the structural strength of your hair is, is in the cortex. So quinoa protein, hydrolyzed quinoa protein, which is what we use in our products, which is where Q shampoo and Q condition get their names, Q for quinoa, is because quinoa not only is a superfood for your body, but it's amazing from a beauty standpoint. Um, so again, hydrolyzed means chopped, but a study, uh, again, this isn't made up stuff. This is scientifically proven data. So it's a really cool study. Um, they took a 1% quinoa 
solution, added it to shampoo and conditioner, and then took multiple tresses of hair. One was a control. It didn't get exposed to the quinoa. It got treated exactly the same, and the other tresses got treated to different uh, either time with the quinoa or different concentrations. So just at 1% quinoa, what we see is uh, on the surface of the hair, so the cuticle, a 16% reduction in the damage after the first use. I mean, that's crazy, right? 16% reduction in the damage, the, the, those torn, jagged, shredded proteins are now being bound to, and 16% of those sites are now closed off after the first use, and 32% after five uses on the cuticle. Okay, surface, I get it, right? It's a surface phenomenon that, you know, the surface makes sense. But talk to me about the cortex, the, the innermost part of the hair, the part where the structure is coming from. You know, that's going to require a molecule that can diffuse in through the cuticle and get here to add, uh, to add some substantivity to it, to affect it. So this is what's more kind of impressive to me, is that when the cortex, after five uses of a 1% quinoa solution, we see a 26% reduction in the damage. It's a really cool way they did it. Um, they put a dye into the hair, and wherever the damage occurs, the dye sticks to it, and they turn on a fluorescent light, and it would light up. So whenever the quinoa binds to it, it doesn't light up anymore. So after the different uses, they would see reduction in the amount of glow from the, uh, from the fluorescent light. Really cool stuff. Uh, it's called a, uh, a fluorescent assay. Uh, some of the other things they tested was wet combing forces. So that's the amount of force it takes for you to pull the comb through your hair. Again, when your hair is wet, that's when it's most uh, vulnerable for damage. And uh, wet combing forces after five uses of a 1% quinoa solution, uh, down 79%. Dry combing forces, so this shows that it doesn't just wash away once you rinse the shampoo and conditioner out, it's sticking around. We see an 85% reduction in dry combing forces after five uses. I talk often about how the shampoo and conditioner, along with the treatment, are a system. These are designed to work together. So I know a lot of you have amazing instantaneous results from the treatment right away, whereas others may have not as instantaneous or not as uh, dramatic the first time. But if you continue to use the shampoo and conditioner, this is a system especially people with fine hair, because there's not much of a cortex in fine hair, it takes time for this. So five uses is kind of our magic number for this, or we say, you know, a, a month of using the product is when you're going to start seeing volume added to fine hair, increase in shine, increase in manageability, reduction in frizz. Uh, one other kind of cool one, uh, they take something called a, a glossometer, which is a, something that measures gloss, so they put it, up against, put it up against the hair, it bounces light off and measures the amount reflected back. So after five uses, the gloss with the 1% quinoa solution went up 51%. So think about your hair is 51% shinier after just five uses of um, a product with quinoa. We use more than 1% quinoa, but uh, with just the 1%, you're seeing these pretty uh, amazing uh, results. So uh, quinoa is pretty awesome. We also use another protein called bao bao, which is actually from an African tree. Also amazing protein. We won't talk about it today, but it's uh, the two of them appear to have some synergy where they work together and uh, they have a more of an effect than each one by itself. Uh, you guys have any questions about quinoa or you want a recipe or you've got a great recipe for quinoa and you want to post it, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, we're trying to get into a series of talking more about the ingredients in our products and what each of them do. Uh, our new website is going to launch next month and we're going to have uh, added information that talks about what everything in our product is and why it's in there and what it does. Because when I designed this system and built it, everything is in there for a reason. So I want to educate you guys as to what these compounds are and why they're in there, where they come from, and um, what they do. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll talk with you guys next week. Um, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Bye.